Hey everybody, this is Sir Taco here, and welcome back to Know Your Weapons, the series that allows you to become a better Splatoon player by allowing you to know your weapons. In this episode, we will be covering the Luna Blaster, which was requested by a few of you guys. If you want to request any weapons for a future Know Your Weapons series, you know where to go in the comment section. Just comment down below what weapon you want next in Know Your Weapons. Unlock requirements for the Luna Blaster are it requires level 11. You do not have to play any single player at all, and it costs 7,700 coins or whatever currency Splatoon uses. The set comes with the Luna Blaster, the Ink Mine, and the Ink Zuka. The Ink Mine is pretty okay. It doesn't help the Luna Blaster very much in its weaknesses, but it builds on its strengths. The Ink Zuka helps a lot with the Luna Blaster's various weaknesses and helps the Lu Luna Blaster become better at long-range scenarios and against long-range weapons. Now it's time for stats. The base direct hit damage of the Luna Blaster is 125%, which makes it a one-shot kill. The direct hit damage is when you hit the enemy directly. It's kind of like having a sweet spot in Smash. Base minimum splash damage or explosion damage is 50%, which makes it a two-hit kill. Inklings basically have 100% health. If it has 50%, then that's half. So, so this weapon will kill in two shots or less, assuming that the enemy did not regen its health. The range of this weapon is 10%, which is really low, really, really low. Like, this range is actually pretty horrible. It's lower than the Carbon Roller, which has 20% range. Uh, I thought the Carbon Roller had bad range, but this weapon has bad range, has horrible range, I mean. The fire rate of this weapon is 30%, which is decent for a blaster. I actually think it's okay, but it could be faster and that could help. So if you have good accuracy, it doesn't really matter if your fire rate is bad, but if you have bad accuracy, then this could affect you a lot. The impact of this weapon is 80%. This weapon has a light special depletion, which lowers your special build up by 40% of your special meter after getting splatted. Let's talk gear. You want damage up on this weapon so you can get kills easier and your ink mine has a bigger one hit kill radius you want swim speed on this weapon because this has very low this weapon has very low range and if you are close to the enemy then this weapon excels and swim speed allows you to get closer to your enemies cold blooded is optional for this weapon because it almost requires flanking and if you are um, point censored or uh, echolocated then everyone knows where you are and you can't flank. Run speed is okay for this weapon because that allows you to move faster and faster movement is better for in this game in general and it helps this weapon a lot and uh, it helps you flank, it helps you move, it helps you go around your enemies, it helps you in one-on-one -on -one situations just swim speed and run speed are probably the most helpful abilities for this weapon. Defense up is also very good because it can help you when you're in one-on-one -on -one situations. If the enemy has damage up, then it can lower that. A quick respawn is also good because you're going to be dying a lot with this weapon because it has very low range and you have to get very close to your enemy to kill them. So I recommend using quick respawn with this weapon. Special charge up is also very good so you can charge up your Ankazuka. Some strategies with this weapon is to get close to your enemies. You have very very bad range so you have to get close to your enemies in order to kill them and this weapon actually is very good at killing so flank the enemy get behind them if you are surprising the enemies you have an easier chance if you're getting shot at then it's gonna be harder for you to kill the enemies it's possible but it's very difficult because the enemies could easily run away if you're behind the enemies surprising them then it will make your life really easy because you can just pop and then kill them. You should do this instead of doing a head-on approach, which would probably get you killed. 
use right side peeking and corners to avoid getting hit because this weapon is actually very good at using right side peeking if you don't know what right side peeking is it's when you're behind a wall and you're at the end of the edge when you peek a little bit and your gun is able to like is on the other side and you can shoot without your body actually being exposed so if you do that you can avoid getting hit and this weapon if enemies are behind the wall that you're behind like on the other side of the wall then you can probably kill them in two shots and use corners and small openings to your advantage pair this with right side peeking because corners and small openings are very good for this weapon because it allows the weapon to play better because this weapon is a very short range weapon and that's why it will allow you to play better use your ink mine to escape when attacked and placed in an unfavorable position swim away and place an ink mine just in case your enemy chases you if your enemy chases you they're dead and then you could escape so it's a pretty good technique use wall peeking it will help you a lot with this weapon it's a very good technique because you can just swim up and then shoot and then get down and then you could probably kill a few enemies who are trying to get you uh, use the Inzuka to attack enemies with longer range or uh, when you are spaced out from enemies so the Inzuka makes up for the lack of range that this weapon has when the enemies are far away you can use the Inzuka and kill them rollers except for the dynamo roller are your only weapons that you have a favored match up because of the luna blaster has a decent rate of fire rollers such as the crack on roller don't have the greatest fire rate so you should target rollers because you have a better chance of winning than them some counters for this weapon are use the low range of the lunar blaster to your advantage attack from far away and make the luna blaster approach you if you allow the luna blaster to approach you then you have the greatest chance to win the gunfight if you know where the luna blaster is then you you can aim at him and try to go farther away and kill and kill it Chargers and other long-range weapons are the enemies of the Luna Blaster. The Luna Blaster is not very good at killing enemies at long range, but don't underestimate it because it can. If it gets close to you, it can kill you. But just just make sure it doesn't get close to you. And overall, this weapon is an excellent weapon for tower control. The Luna Blaster can push the tower with its great damage output. You can place ink mines on the tower to help defend it. If somebody tries to get on the tower, such as an enemy, it will kill them. The Inkzuka can splat people from far away, so it's a great option. This weapon is not so good at turf war due to its low range and decent fire rate. It's not good at covering ground, but it's very good at getting kills. It's okay for Rainmaker, because it has an easy time killing enemies. It's okay for splat zones because it can control areas of some maps with smaller zones such as Moray Towers or Bluefin Default. Overall, this is an okay weapon for rank mode but horrible at regular battle or turf war. And that is the end of the episode guys. See you guys next time.